follow up on the uh, workshop we had concerning some of the uh, uh, problems that you addressed, John, and where where we're going. I would, I would, actually, I was disappointed it wasn't on the agenda. And, and what are we doing? Are we doing anything? Are we having any conversation with anybody? Well, actually, that's what one of the things I wanted to do later on is, is just uh, see if we want to have a meeting, if we want to put it in you know, another meeting, and <coughs> whether we want to go ahead and put it on the agenda to go ahead and, and uh, let the board start giving some direction to our attorneys what we want to do with our ordinance. I don't think we need to do anything. It, well, I was I just worried with you, Elizabeth. I was more interested in finding out whether you could uh, approve uh, some type of committee. I was offering a, a private one. I'm not really sure that would work very well. Whether you could, we could hire a consultant uh, that everybody would be happy with that could address these guys directly uh, and, and maybe make some uh, some inroads on uh, letting them provide the service they're trying to provide. Who, what do you mean by following? You spent a lot of money to fight these guys and not doing this because one, uh, it was always an, an issue with either environmental or, or whatever. Uh, maybe we need somebody that's professional to go in and, and address you this because some people on the board wasn't interested in meeting them privately. Something that a <laughs> professional would need to pay. And, and get them to recommend some things to allow them to, to, to drill and meet the requirements that we're looking for. Because quite honestly, <laughs> you say, well, well, we've been doing this for five years. No one seems to be, every time there's an issue, even at the workshop, it was an issue because you were questioning why they weren't here. And no effect, I have respect for John, but you guys bring an attorney, what are they supposed to do? <laughs> okay, I, was, I was surprised. That you were there. Well, well, I asked John to be there. One of the reasons for it is because of the Act 13 case. We needed legal advice as to what you can do and what you can't do. Now the Supreme Court has ruled, Mike, and that's what you yeah, have to ask fine. questions about. And I mean, I am one that's of the fine, people that said, but Mike, I am one of the people that said I don't want to meet privately with them. And one of the reasons well, why. Let me, let me let address me that. Finish, but let me finish saying, and you can go ahead and say. One of the reasons why I will not like, meet privately with them is because they have lawsuits against us right now. And as the solicitor has advised us, it's not a good idea to meet with a privately with a company when they're suing you. Now, whether it's Range or anybody else, it's something you shouldn't do. Mike, I'd like to I, say I disagree something. with that. Let me yeah. address that, please. Okay. Uh, you have private meetings with, with people all the time. No, and we don't do it as much. That, that's really irrelevant. Irre 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 the irre Supreme Court has already ruled on that in the case that I brought what? for the board a year ago. I'm sorry. The Richmond you. case, or it's from Richmond Township. Would you please? I misunderstand. John, you know about it. The, uh, the Pennsylvania yeah. Supreme Court held that supervisors not only have the right to meet regarding litigation, but they have an obligation. It, at the time, it was under appeal to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. Since that time, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court has affirmed the lower court that the supervisors not only have a right, but have an obligation to meet, whether or not there's litigation for fact-finding purposes. Well, not make decisions, but simply for fact-finding purposes, and to see if the settlement is possible without making any decisions. Very clear. So I, I guess I need to ask you, Andy, what who advised you that that wasn't possible? Well, I, I took it on the advice of look. I, I can tell you two, two, two different things, Andy. One, Elizabeth's talking about meeting for purposes of the litigation and settlement, and that's always possible to the extent we we talked about in the past getting a non-disclosure agreement because anything you say to the other side or vice versa mm -hmm. is an admission can be used against you in court. So you don't want to speak out of turn. Um, say something that will cause a problem. And our insurance carrier back in the day got involved and said, you know, without any parameters, they didn't want us to meet. You were talking about you're talking about a different meeting, Mike. You're talking about putting litigation aside, meeting with them about arrangements with the township and going forward. Which could address some of the litigation. Yeah. Well which also I have a question on why if the insurance company is making recommendations, are they paying for the litigation? Yes. Yeah, they do. So they're going to take those cases over? Yes. Mike, I'd like to say something, if I recall. At, well, at the I need to finish this thought, though, because i got short-term memory loss. Okay, me too. At this <laughs> point, uh, if what you're saying is now we're in litigation, because you know, I've owned companies, I've been in litigation, 
I mean, part of the, the responsibility of managing uh, an entity is to see if you can rectify that without going to trial or to I negotiate think, it away. I think so right now, you're telling me that you're handcuffed by the attorneys and the insurance company. I've no. never really heard of that, John, in, in real life. Mike, I've really sent you the Pennsylvania that. Supreme Court case. You can read the English language. You'll understand. I understand, but I'm, I'm really surprised that this board wouldn't want to address that and keep us. I mean, how much money have we spent on this, on fighting with people, when we should be working out something that works? Well, remember, we, we were sued. We didn't sue them, so they, okay. they, they control. But maybe they'd be willing to take the suit off. Excuse me, John. In all fairness, though, that, that attorney for the insurance company who's representing us said specifically he didn't want us to go and meet with him private, privately either to discuss the case without him or he didn't want us going private or, or he didn't have any problem with us going if we went and discussed any other uh, business that Thompson had with that company. And so, so, so why would they be here, Tom, but, but, uh, to discuss anything in front of anybody? And especially when you're attorney when you're asking them to come over and you can everybody they, they challenge the fact that they weren't here. When you got an attorney and they don't. Right, Mike, I understand that. <laughs> I know we have to do things like that, but, but the attorney did say that without him being there. So, so we could meet with them and we would sure invite the attorney back over to their office. The, the have we done office. that? Have we ever tried that? I don't know. I'm, I'm not challenging you. All I'm trying to say can we get past, you know, we're sure. an endless lawsuit. One no offense. One of the lawsuits. How would it be an endless rediction, rezoning? because of some decisions that you said were made. This one, is like a never-ending battle. One of the lawsuits was um, resolved. They, the job is in or not. But Mark West dropped one of their lawsuits this month, this past month. So. How many do we have? Mark West has two against, the, well, now one against the township, and Range has, I think, two against the township. And what are they concerned? The, one is the appeal to zoning hearing board from the compressor station denial on 980. That's Mark West. Which is something that could be addressed. It could be. Um, that, that was argued before the Commonwealth Court in December. In December. Well, I understand. Well, what's the next one? The next one is um, Range filed a right to no request. And the Office of Open Records filed in favor of the township. And Range appealed that to court common pleas. That is before the judge and the insurance council has that case. Again, something that could be addressed. It, it could be. Obviously. They're thinking they're not being treated adequately. Well, that, that's why one court's already ruled that they were. But the other one is a lawsuit that they filed, which is called a writ. They just, well, wait a minute. It's not really Your interpretation was that they were, the court found them not to be treated properly. In their mind, they're not, whether they won or lost. And my question is, what, how did they get to that point? Why are they at that point? The point is that, let me go back. I'm not going to fight. How do we address this? Can we get our engineers to, to deal with this? Because they seem, we seem to be at an impact. Well, Mike, that's why, that's why before this last meeting that we had, okay, it was an open public meeting, all right? And all it was was not to make any decisions, but to throw ideas out there from everybody. Is well, it what we felt we going with that? And that's, expected it on this but that's schedule. what I said. That's what I wanted to do tonight is to schedule another one or whether we start moving I forward on it. But, but, but the, the whole purpose was, Mike, you're trying to make it, because I did talk to Don about this, and Don can verify it. I did ask you to send an email to range to Jim Cannon and invite him, and tell him basically it wasn't to make any decisions. It was to just throw ideas out there, because this is what needed to be looked at with the, the Act 13 finally being decided, Mike, and that's what it was all about. Mike, I'd like to say something now. I've been waiting quietly, and I'm going to forget. Please. I'm going to lose my train of thought. I remember... When you spoke at the last meeting, it was the oil and gas meeting that we had, and you proposed something that I thought was a good idea, and that's that we get a committee of our own, but we, you. And I'd be willing to do that, but I, 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 I got gigantic reservations that we're kind of, it's not going to lead to anything. I, Why don't we try? And, because nothing else seems to work. Our board doesn't want to do anything. Why would it take well, I disagree with that. Why can't we? That take offense to you telling us that we don't want to do anything. I just had a public meeting and I invited Range and the whole purpose of it was to get ideas out there. So and we, we can move forward. Jobs. And I want to move forward. Well, we're forward. Five yeah. minutes long. Yeah. Yeah. So what did we accomplish? We accomplished nothing. Nobody from, from the audience spoke except Mike. What? 
Anyway, that's, that's the last, the last thing I have a question is whether we can have an engineer or somebody that's, that's responsible that knows how to deal with the interactions between the board and the, and the drilling company, whoever they are. Because, no offense, I look at charters, I look at other townships and they're not having any issues. Uh, they may have issues with construction and, and performance, but they're, they're allowing it to happen. What makes them so much different than us? They're giving a million dollars a year and we're not. Thank you. Impact <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you. So we have a new address we can talk about. Can we deal with something of that nature? Because I, I don't see what's going on. I mean, I went to the workshop. I don't understand where we're going. I think Andy said he's going to bring something up later. And we have to discuss whether we want to go ahead and have another one or not exactly. Mike. These ideas, everybody has, you have one opinion, I know there's other opinions out there, and that's why we try to get everybody to come up and, and into these But their opinion is following, that's my point. Yes, it does. The board has not done anything in five years. I, there's people with five-year leases that are they're running out. So my point is, nothing has been done for five years. And Jim Cannon was the one that said. I ain't talking about Jim Cannon. Well, he was. Why don't we talk to the executive? He was. He is not an executive. He is a PR guy. He asked the question whether there'd be any drilling, and he said no, not not. Andy, thirteen. Uh, that's what I'm trying to tell you. He's not an executive. He doesn't. Even if he wanted to, he wouldn't make the decision. Why can't we get people who are going to make the decision? You guys make the decision here. Why are we talking with somebody who can't make the decision? In my That's opinion, if you were saying it wasn't an opinion, you made a suggestion that we have a committee. Uh, some, we, some of us said that if you can form a committee, we'll go together and meet with them and uh, see if we can bring something more productive back to the board. It, um, uh, it, it's not that the board will do anything, it's just your committee, you're going to have to depend on it to actually take that step. And some of us will go, we told you that. All right. I mean, that's all I'm trying to do is get move forward. It seems like it's getting more convoluted. I can't be afraid to go and meet with them. What? I can't be afraid to go and meet with them. Well, that's, that's your opinion, Tom. I don't agree with it. I mean, privately with them like that. You I have, again, Andy, you have private meetings with, with people all the time. And I, I, I told you, I said I'd explain my huh? position on this, okay? <laughs> we'll explain sure. this. So, okay, is there any other comments?